Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. Guys, a couple big news stories that have, have, have kind of surfaced uh, the last day or so um, involving BlackRock. Also, uh, some news from the Bank of Japan, uh, which kind of um, involves the carry trade, right? The yen carry trade. So we're going to get into all of that. Um, but before we do, as always, guys, I want to hop over here. This is the Salty Sanctuary here. Um, and as you can see, I've, this is the sanctuary I've been kind of spotlighting this entire month. Uh, small sanctuary I've been helping out. I went down last weekend and helped them uh, raise some money. Uh, these guys are out of St. George, Utah. Uh, but they've got 28 animals, really small sanctuary. If you guys have anything you can help these guys out, help these animals out, uh, please consider going over and donating. I have their links to their Facebook, their uh, Instagram, Venmo, and PayPal in the description. So just go down into the description, go over to PayPal or Venmo, throw them a buck or two. Anything you... you uh, donate to these guys really helps them out and is very much appreciated. So, okay, let's get into it. What is the news with BlackRock? This is from Forbes, guys. And uh, BlackRock actually put a paper out um, saying that they are quietly preparing for a $35 trillion Federal Reserve dollar crisis with Bitcoin. Um, so guys, this is, this is a big, uh, story here. Actually, it just kind of adds fuel to the fire of what they've already came out and said, but, um, I just want to read you guys a little bit of, of this, uh, article. So it says Bitcoin has suddenly surged higher following the federal reserves first post pandemic interest rate cut that's predicted to send the Bitcoin price skyrocketing. The Bitcoin price has climbed over uh, to over $62,000 per Bitcoin with traders now turning to China shock, shock and awe earthquake after the Fed surprised traders with a 50 basis point cut, uh, kicking off what's expected to be a fresh liquidity cycle that could put Bitcoin and crypto markets on the cusp of a major move. Uh, it goes on to say, now as fears swirl that the US dollar is on the verge of a total collapse, the world's largest asset manager, Black BlackRock, has warned of growing concerns around the spiraling $35 trillion US debt pile that is predicted to drive institutional interest in Bitcoin. Uh, further, it says uh, the growing concerns in the U.S. and abroad over the, the state of the U.S. federal deficits and debt has increased the appeal of potential alternative reserve assets like Bitcoin as a potential hedge against possible future events affecting the U.S. dollar. Uh, and this was from several high up chief um, officers in BlackRock. Um, and this, yeah, this is obviously, you know, a paper outlining the investment case for Bitcoin. So guys, this is why BlackRock isn't seeing any outflows from their ETFs. You know, this is the narrative that they're selling their investments is that, you know, before, before this came out, it was it was really just kind of Larry Fink and BlackRock kind of saying that they believed uh, that, that Bitcoin was a sound financial inst instrument and a flight to safety. S but now they're kind of getting into why it's a flight to safety. You know, the dollar and the, the U.S. deficit is on shaky ground, according to BlackRock. and. Um, you know, the only way to really get out of that system is Bitcoin. 
you know, you can go into gold, but Bitcoin is is more and more uh, showing that it's it's a better, faster, more easily divided hedge against the dollar and against fiat currencies. So super, super big for BlackRock to kind of come out. You know, they've never, as far as I know, they've never come out so hard against the dollar and and really kind of shown that with with the the deficit and these rate cuts and everything we're we're kind of on shaky ground with the dollar so you really should be hedged against that kind of move um so this next quote in this um article is from eric balchunas he's one of um bloomberg's etf analysts and has been really helpful in knowing what's going on with these uh, Bitcoin ETFs. But he, he says, this is why some have called Bitcoin the second amendment of money. And I've never actually heard that, but I like it. Um, you know, instead of, you know, the right to bear arms, it's the right to self-sovereignty, the right to control your own finances, um, which is pretty big, you know, I mean, we've, we've kind of talked about that several times on the channel, but being self-sovereign is, is huge. You don't have to rely on banks and, uh, the dollar, um, and the national deficit, you know, all these things that, that really affect your life, you can kind of opt out of now. Um, so yeah, he, um, so that was from Bloomberg Intelligence ETF analyst Eric Balchunas, um, adding the U.S. debt pile of 35 trillion that's growing at a clip of one trillion dollars every hundred days has no end in sight. So we are literally adding a hundred trillion or one trillion, sorry, one trillion dollars. Uh, every hundred days to our national deficit. And it's just getting worse. You know, both, both candidates right now, Trump and Harris, have no plan to reduce the deficit. It's all about spending. Uh, so they're just going to add and add and add, no matter who gets into office um, this next four years. They're going to spend, and and the the de uh, U.S. deficit is just going to go up and up and up. And Bitcoin is your way to opt out of that. So, uh, big big news here, guys. Um, I don't know. This really this this kind of just speaks to you know a lot of the the people out there that are are saying, well, BlackRock's getting into Bitcoin to, to destroy it. Or, um, you know, you have uh, a lot of people out there that are just really skeptical of BlackRock's intentions in Bitcoin and why they're getting into Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, but this just really shows that this is Bitcoin is their escape hatch for getting out of the dollar. Uh, it's, you know, like Larry Fink has been saying for a while, it's their flight to safety. It's, you know, they, they have no in, I mean, you can get as conspiratorial as you want, but BlackRock, this is their escape hatch from really kind of a failing fiat system. So cool to see him take it, uh, a whole step another step forward on that guys i want to jump over to this also this is big um news this just happened today the bank of japan keeps rates on hold ueda uh the the governor um kind of the fed chair for the bank of japan kind of the the jerome pal of japan's central bank tempers another hike speculation so this is good for bitcoin um it's kind of a, a damned if you do, don't damned if you don't situation, because I think this initially in a way kind of um, 
made Bitcoin and stocks tick slightly lower this morning, but we're kind of just normalizing there. And I'll, I'll tell you how I, how I uh, look at that. But um, basically, UADA tempers another hike speculation. They keep rates the same. So we're not seeing another rate hike that could strengthen the yen, bring the dollar down further, and cause a bunch of sell-offs in commodities, equities, stocks that we saw six weeks ago with the carry trade unwind. So that's good. It's kind of holding steady. You know, we're not going to see a big unwind of, of that carry trade, uh, at least anytime soon. S uh, but what, what the comments from UADA did was it did weaken the yen, which made the dollar, the dollar actually uh, climbed pretty good this morning on this news. And when the dollar climbs, Bitcoin kind of comes down against the dollar, right? Even if Bitcoin is just holding steady with on Bitcoin news and, and whatever, if the dollar gains, obviously Bitcoin is staying the same, but the dollar gains, so we kind of lose a little bit of, of footing against the dollar. Um, but that's that's just a short term thing, guys. Like um, this 50 basis points cut that we just got Wednesday uh, from the Federal Reserve is just going to weaken the dollar over the next um, year, two years, who knows. Um, so yeah, we did kind of see, we dipped from like, I think last night we hit somewhere around 64,000 on Bitcoin. And then this morning we, we saw us kind of dip back below uh, 63. I think we went down to like 62.5 or so, uh, kind of on this news and the, the dollar just gaining strength this morning. But we've kind of recovered from that. I think we're holding pretty steady around 63,000 right now. Um, and really, there's just nothing but tailwind winds, in my opinion. We're going to see more institutions taking that, that uh, page out of BlackRock's, BlackRock's playbook um, and kind of hedging against the massive government spending. Um, and rate cuts, you know, the, the dollar is just going to lose strength, uh, while we're cutting rates. So uh, that's just how it happens. Um, yeah, we're just going to see more and more institutions that are finally getting their due diligence done, um, after these ETFs have, have launched. And we're just going to see wave after wave of institutional investments now flooding into Bitcoin um, as a way to hedge against inflation, against uh, government spending, all kinds of things. So a lot of tailwinds coming for Bitcoin, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, good news, guys. Anyways, if you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, really helps the channel out. And as always, I'm really honored to that you guys have kind of lent me your ear. Let me uh, take up some time of your day and watch my videos. So really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.